Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. It's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 70, and we got a hot one for you here tonight. Some good topics, a great interview coming up with you right now. Uh, but first, hey, like I said, I'm Mike Sorg here in the Pittsburgh area doing some stuff, doing some video production here with the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, documentaries with my buddy Joe Dombrowski, uh, including Finding Zach Gowan you can check out. Also with me on the line is my co-host, my friend in indie wrestling. That's why we're doing a show about indie wrestling, because we're kind of dedicated to it, uh, but not as much as a lot of our guests in the ring. Uh, he's Eamon Payton. Eamon, two please on the Twitter. He's a commentator down there. Inspire Pro Wrestling, which you're definitely going to go to if you're in the area instead of watching the Elimination Chamber in a couple of weeks. Definitely. Absolutely. Or going to the definitely. Elimination Chamber. What? It's four hours away. Definitely. Um, but no, uh, definitely. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to be on. Uh, excited to talk indie wrestling as always. Like you, know, you said, a lot of good stuff this week. Awesome. And of course, please check out our stuff. Check out our friend Basic Sickness. He does the intro, outro music for this. Pittsburgh original as well. BasicSickness.com for free music, music videos, everything. He's been a, a longtime friend of the network and uh, uh, really glad to get his music out there and, and we hope you enjoy it. Uh, also, please check us out. WrestlingMayhemShow.com for everything going on. We don't just talk about any wrestling. We talk about everything. Eamon uh, participates on the Midweek War talking uh, NXT and, and, and Lucha Underground and everything else fun going on. And uh, we we have daily shows and, and all kinds of fun stuff you can check out and communicate with us on. You can communicate with us as well. 412-206-WMS0. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or join the Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, especially the Facebook group, and uh, Mayhem Show on Twitter. And we're also on the Google+. Plus. Uh, some of you guys posting some weird stuff on Google+, Plus these days. Just putting that out there. Uh whew. Shouldn't follow everybody back, I guess. But anyways, uh, and please follow Indie Mayhem Show. Please subscribe to us, especially on iTunes, even if you don't use iTunes and podcast app, but it helps greatly to help get the word out here, out there, uh, algorithms and such, right? And uh, please just share it and subscribe to us where you do listen to us. We're available on Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, as I mentioned, YouTube, and we do post these videos whenever we can, at least some clips and such over on our Facebook page. Eamon, I understand we got a really cool interview this week. We do have a really cool interview this week. Uh, uh, normally, it's someone from my uh, uh, neck of the woods, uh, uh, but this one, not necessarily from, from the state of Texas, even though she does uh, appear from time to time and inspire pro wrestling, even, even unexpected times, and, and beats people up. Uh, but uh, <laughs> she uh, is a, a Midwest standout. Uh, she has competed for promotions like Inspire Pro Wrestling, but also St. Louis Anarchy, Dreamwave Wrestling, and many other, uh, and Shimmer Wrestling as well, and many other great wrestling promotions across the country. And we're happy to have her this week on the show uh ladies and gentlemen please welcome to indie mayhem show number 70 angela slane angelus how are you this evening i'm good how are you fantastic um so i, I guess the best way to start it off uh, is the uh the kind of icebreaker question we tend to ask uh guests on this show uh because you know we all get into wrestling for one reason or the other uh, uh what is your first ever memory of uh, watching professional wrestling uh, my first memory from watching pro wrestling I want to say I was around like eight years old and my uncle put it on in my grandparents' living room and it was like a, I believe it was a Sunday night heat if I remember correctly. Um, and I remember the undertaker was on the screen and it was back in the era where he had like the purple hat and the purple gloves and it was like super terrifying. And I just remember thinking that he was so scary and I was like, Oh my gosh. And then I just started to watch and it was pretty much, I was addicted from that point on. Awesome, definitely. Uh, did you majority watch uh, just uh, WWF around that time? Yeah, I honestly didn't watch WCW. I was one of those people that was like, if I watch WWF, I can't watch WCW because that would be like, I would be not loyal. Right, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> uh, uh, so going from, uh, uh, you know, watching it and, and actually starting and becoming a professional wrestler. Uh, uh, where, well, first of all, where did you get training and how did you find out that, uh, uh, that you could train to become a, a professional wrestler? Um, I got trained in Kansas city, Missouri under Derek stone. Um, I kind of just fell into it unexpectedly. Um, I discovered the independent wrestling scene, which I didn't know existed. Um, just accidentally by finding a flyer and, 
my friends and I went to a show and kind of checked it out. And it was really cool. And uh, Derek Stone was on the show. And we kind of went up and talked to him afterwards and did the typical, like, oh, my gosh, how can I become a pro wrestler? And he said that he had a training school. And we kind of all talked about it and molded all over. And uh, me and my brother and a friend of his at the time decided that we were going to go check it out. So we went and checked out the school and talked to Derek some more. And we were all kind of like, all right, let's do it. It'll be awesome. And uh, it just kind of snowballed from there. I actually ended up being the only person in my training class that graduated. Everyone oh, really? else was like a, a middle-aged man that was going to like a midlife crisis or my brother <laughs> ended up leaving. Um, I don't, I don't even remember why, but he eventually before I finished training ended up going to the army and then his friend uh, got like the basics down and then thought he knew everything and went off and did his own thing. <laughs> right. So, but you no, know, that's, and that's interesting that, you know, you were the only one in your class to sort of make it out of there and, and going in and we'll talk sort of a lot about, you know, women in professional wrestling and, and, and all that stuff. But do you feel, do you find that it was, you know, that it was more difficult for you being a woman in wrestling uh, in the, in the training process, at least were you, you know, you know, how was, how was your treatment? I guess, like in the early goings during, during that time. Um, I don't, I, I got trained exactly like any of the guys were being trained. It was weird at first because I trained when I was really young. I trained when I was, started when I was 13 and I uh, got out of school when I was out of the training school when I was 14. And to be in a training class with people that were significantly older than I was, um, the only person close to my age was my brother who's three years older than me. And then his friend who's four years older than me. And then the rest of them, like I said, were all like in their late twenties or mid thirties or forties. Like they were all kind of having like a midlife crisis <laughs> and a lot of them like I guess were offended that I was let into the class being young and being female and so they always like tried to do like the like I'm gonna one up or kind of like showmanship crap that whatever like if that's gonna make their ego feel better to beat up a 13 year old girl then cool go for it but uh I took you know every bump I took every hit I took every strike like it wasn't I never backed out on anything because um, I felt like I, I, it's not that I felt like I couldn't, but I wanted to prove that I deserved to be there and that I could be, I could do the exact same things, if not better than everyone else was in the, in the class. And I think I eventually did prove that by being the only person that made it from day one to the last day. Definitely. Awesome. Um, going into sort of then, uh, you know, traveling the road and, and, and working the independent wrestling scene, uh, uh, were, were there any places that sort of stuck out to you as, as places that, uh, you know, you, you wrestled a bunch and, and, and got a lot of opportunities at? Um, during my wrestling has been really good to me. Uh, I haven't wrestled a whole lot there, but as far as like using me and making sure I'm on the shows and character development, uh, I don't think I would be as far into my character development as I, as I am uh, without Dreamwave and without them kind of like just throwing me out there in different situations. And kind of um, uh, for a while, the running joke was that if you were put with Angela Slane, you'd eventually quit because <laughs> my first two partners ended up leaving Dreamwave. Um, one was Reed Bentley and the other was Shane Hollister, who then uh, broke his ankle and thought he was going to retire so that was kind of understandable. Um, and now I kind of have, I have a good thing going there. Uh, Inspire Pro has been really good to me. Uh, I've only been on two of their shows, but they have been really good to me. Um, <laughs> and despite uh, some of the things I have done behind management's back, like <laughs> showing up at the last show and beating up Delilah Doom. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll get into that <laughs> going forward. Um, uh, Shimmer has always been good to me. Dave Prizak has always uh, taken a chance on me, and especially this last set of tapings because I was only two weeks out of my ankle cast when he uh, took a chance and let me re-debut on Volume 74. So uh, Prizak has always been somebody that's, um, that's had my back and has always given me opportunities. Awesome, definitely. Uh, uh, you you mentioned your uh, coming back from your recent uh, ankle injury. Uh, uh, you're 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 one to to mention a lot on 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 Twitter and 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 social media that uh, uh, you do have a history of uh, of some uh, pretty big injuries in professional wrestling. I know uh, uh, your ankle <laughs> being the most recent, uh, but but I know you also had um, uh, some past history with uh, uh, post concussion syndrome. I believe you actually had your own uh, uh, podcast at one point that sort of talked about that. Uh, 
uh, the stuff you were going through at that time with, uh, with post concussion syndrome and all that. Um, mm-hmm. What is it? We, we talk a lot, but obviously me and Sorg, you know, we're not in ring competitors, so we don't really know, you know, a lot of what th- th- these wrestlers have to go through. Um, injuries in professional wrestling. Do you think, you know, uh, what, what, I guess the best question to start off is like, what goes through your head when, you know, this happens? Do you, do you ever feel like, Oh, you know, is it worth it? You know, you know, what, what makes you sort of go forward and continue on? Um, Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I know, but, uh, let's see. Um, coming back from post concussion syndrome was something that I was kind of leery of. Uh, I obviously had to be a lot more careful and couldn't be nearly as reckless as it had been. And when I came back, I got, I still had some pretty good momentum. Um, I didn't take a lot of time off for it. Like I probably should have, but uh, I haven't really had any you know, issues with it since then. Um, like I said, I have to just be smarter with some of the stuff I do and take care of myself, you know, in ring wise and stuff. The injury I had after that, where I broke both of my wrists at the same time was and is probably the most uh, traumatizing injury that I had in professional wrestling. And that was one of the big ones that hit me, obviously physically, but also mentally and emotionally. And that was, I think the time that I had to take a step back and I really like had to tell myself, like, is this worth it? Is this something that uh, I can continue doing? Like this is, you know, I, at that point I couldn't function in everyday life. Like I didn't have arms and um, it was really mentally and emotionally exhausting to deal with. Because you don't want to be a burden to people, but you have to ask for help. Uh, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to seem fragile, but you're walking around with your arm in two cast, you know, your arms in mm-hmm. cast. And you get really sick of people asking what you did. And so I, at some points I just started making up stories. Like I got attacked by a bear or hit by a car. Like it was ridiculous. I was tired of telling people. Because when you tell people you're a professional wrestler, it's either, oh, like MMA or it's like, oh my gosh, I know everything about pro wrestling. And you're like, oh my God, no, you don't. Please shut up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I I took a lot. I broke my arms in May, actually the week before the very first Inspired Pro show that I was supposed to be uh, at. I broke them on a Sunday. No, I broke them on a Thursday, and I was supposed to be at Inspired Pro on Sunday. So that was a big, like, oh, got to go on contact management and be like, hey, I just broke both my arms. And I was still going to come down and just appear on the show and kind of explain what happened. And, um, you know, obviously not going to wrestle. And then I was getting uh, casted up and everything the next day because in the emergency room, they put me in splints. And then I had to go see an orthopedic surgeon and get my cast and the whole to-do and get my wrists reset. And uh, I was just kind of like, there's no way. There's no way I can travel in a car with four other people without being able to move my arms. Like, it, it was just, I, I contacted management. I was like, look, well, I'm really, really sorry, but I cannot do this. And they were like, nope, we totally understand. <laughs> and, no, no, uh, uh, so. yeah, I remember Biss actually texted me that night and he's like, hey, tweet about that. Uh, Angela Slane will be there. She broke both of her wrists. And it's like, <laughs> oh. Yeah, like like that, that kind of you know it, it's it's so surprising because like you said like it's one of those things that's so unique to wrestling like and and yeah. um do you notice uh, and and you're very I, I mean i mean obviously certain injuries are one thing but also you're you're very you know out there when it comes to like you know what what you know has happened to you in in professional wrestling uh mm-hmm. do you think that injuries are more prevalent on on wrestlers but we just don't always hear about them on the independence uh, I, I i think i I, I mentioned something, I think it was when we were talking about the whole uh, Daniel Bryan stuff happening recently. Um, but do you think it is just a thing that's ha- happening a lot, but just people kind of keep it under wraps a lot of the time? Uh, I know a lot of wrestlers who have been injured that either still worked injured or just never um, announced it. Unfortunately, in my case, most of the time it's a go big or go home injury. So I've always had to eventually announce it because, you know, if I if I'm booked for – three months out and I can't make three months worth of shows Mm -hmm. at some point, someone's going to figure something out. So why not just be honest and also give 
you know, the companies I'm working for a reason to, you know, be like, hey, this is why she's not appearing instead of me just kind of looking like I'm backing out of my bookings and looking kind of shady. Uh, Obviously, I still have a reputation to uphold within the companies I work for and also with my fan base. And I've always been pretty brutally honest with my fan base. And like, I know that sometimes it's, you know, I've caught hell for it because people, you know, have targeted me out and made fun of me. And, you know, they call me fragile or whatever. And, you know, I get that to a certain degree. And, like, I get harmless banter and things like that. But at the same time, like, uh, a lot of people realize, I think, how serious my wrist injury was. And I didn't really catch as much crap as I normally did. Um, But I I think a lot of people work through injuries or hide injuries. And I, I completely understand that. But, like I said, like, to a certain degree, like, I can't. I, there's no way I, I could hide that I had two broken arms. Like there was no mm-hmm. way that I could hide, you know, two casts. Like there was no way I could still make appearances at places like I, I was doing and the pictures not get on the internet that I had, you know, two casts on my arms with no explanation, but that I hadn't been at certain shows for matches I was scheduled to be in. Um, and it was the same thing with my ankle recently. Like I, I had a, a lot of shows scheduled and, there was just no way for me to get around being like, I'm just not going to be there. And yeah. it was, it was something I didn't want to announce. Like, like with my wrist injury, I waited a, at least, I think a week before I personally announced it. Like I let Inspire announce it and that kind of got the buzz going and like ring bells immediately did an article on it, but I never really like stepped up. I don't feel like and said anything about it for like a week or so because I didn't really know what to say other than like, Hey, I had this freak accident. Um, but like with my ankle, I was, I, I think I waited a couple of days as well. And then I made uh, an announcement on my first, like my personal Facebook and then on my professional Facebook and then on Twitter. And if you follow me on Instagram, like I um, posted like my cast and stuff, but like you said, it was just kind of another freak accident thing. And like, if people want to label you as, you know, uh, fragile or made of glass or whatever, because, you know, you run into some bad luck here and there, then I guess that's on them. Yeah. But I do understand why some wrestlers hide their injuries or work or try and just continue to work with their injuries. Um, and that's everyone's opinion. Like I broke both my arms at the beginning of the match and I still wrestled 10 more minutes and did what I was supposed to do. And I broke my ankle at the beginning of the match and wrestled, 10 more minutes and did what I was supposed to do. And I mean, at that point, like you're so hopped up on adrenaline, I guess it doesn't really matter. And you don't really like realize what has happened. Mm -hmm. Um, But for the people that know that they're injured and go into matches injured, like that's, that's a decision that we all have to make. But at the same time, you also have to make the decision as to, am I still capable to take care of my opponent? Definitely. Definitely. Um, uh, going into some of the, because um, yeah, because you've gotten the chance to work, you know, a, a, a lot of places and stuff like that. Um, we we mentioned because we had a couple of women's wrestling uh, 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 guests on the show in the past uh, to talk about sort of like the opportunities uh, for women on on the independent wrestling scene. Uh, uh, I know, I mean, you've worked for obviously Shimmer Wrestling, which is a full you know women's wrestling promotion, but also I know you've done you know a lot of intergender stuff too in like st louis anarchy i know you recently uh, uh challenged for their heavyweight title um mm-hmm. do you think uh independent wrestling is offering more opportunities for women do you see that you know the the uh the market has i guess opened in a sense uh, uh for women competitors i feel like it's starting to i still feel like it, to a certain extent that women's wrestling is frowned upon um just because it's had such a bad reputation for so long and uh, they, you know, a lot of people base their opinion on women's wrestling off of what you see on TV. And for the longest time, what you saw on TV wasn't that great either. And obviously now they've changed their division and stepped things up with NXT, the NXT division and things like that. So people are starting to, you know, garner more interest in women's, you know, competition. And uh, I feel like Shimmer has always been kind of its own island out there as an advocate for women's wrestling because people can watch Shimmer and see some of just the best wrestlers in the world, not even the fact that they're the best female wrestlers in the world, but just best wrestlers. Like mm-hmm. you can't, you can put any guy up in, in the ring with Madison Eagles and I feel like she'd be able to out wrestle them. Or a good example is Sarah Del Rey. She's not just the best female wrestler in the world. She is one of the best wrestlers in the world. And that was proven today 
by the fact that she's no longer just a women's coach down at the performance center, but she's the assistant head trainer, like the assistant trainer. Yeah. Like she is going to train everyone, male or female. And I think that says a lot that she has been able to do that for herself, you know, by proving her ability in the ring and then proving her ability to train and teach and pass on what she knows. Um, I just, I think that for the longest time, a lot of people didn't have enough interest in women's wrestling to really capitalize on it. And then you had places, uh, take note for, I want to say take note from Shimmer or kind of think about it. And, you know, they started having girls night out at AIW in Ohio and then, um, WSU was around for the longest time and they've started to, you know, garner more attention with the management change and the way it's promoted now and it being paired with CGW. Uh, and I just feel like to a certain extent, like every, every show that has women on it might have a bad match, you know? Some girls can't do what other girls can do, and some girls can out-wrestle guys. And, and it's just, you know, it depends on your training, how you continue your training, how dedicated you are, because you're always going to run into the, the women's wrestlers that just want to be seen. They just want to go out there and be cute and people to clap for them and whatever. And they don't necessarily know what they can do beyond, you know, day one of training. And then you have girls that have, like, dedicated their lives to it, and they've trained here, and they've trained there, and they've gone and trained in Japan or gone and trained someplace in Europe or, you know, anything like that. And that says a lot. And you can tell the girls that have dedicated the more time and not even necessarily the more money into training, but like just the time because you get what you pay for. And if you pay, you know, $2,000 for training and you don't care, uh, I almost cussed. I don't know if I can cuss or not, but I, I censored yeah, myself. We have, we have no problem whatsoever. We, okay, cool. I, I, there there been, there's been much worse than that on the show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, not really ask, and then I forgot, so I filtered myself with that. But like, if, if the girl gets, like, you know, goes in and just doesn't give a shit because at the end of the day, she just wants to be pretty, like, go be a model. Like, no one wants you in this business and to, like, tarnish what everyone else is out there killing themselves for. Um, I still feel like, like I said, I still feel like women's wrestling has a negative connotation to it. But at the same time, with what, the success that's happening in NXT, and even the, how far you, you've seen competitors like the Bellas come, like, I feel like certain people are starting to take notice of women's wrestling and not just see it as like a sideshow anymore, mm -hmm. especially when it can take a main stage of a show like Girls Night Out or like a Shimmer or a WSU and uh, prove that, you know, they can do and entertain the same, the same way that guys do. Definitely. I'm flat. I, I absolutely fully agree with that. Um, uh, so going to the further stuff, uh, we, we briefly mentioned uh, uh, your recent stuff for Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, uh, coming in at our last show, uh, uh, unexpected, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to put a bit of a beat down on Delilah Doom. And, and, and we actually had Delilah on a couple weeks ago. Uh, oh, I'm and, sorry. Yeah, you don't seem to be very fond of uh, Delilah Doom uh, uh, all so much. Uh, 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 we know you, uh, you actually released the promo for uh, uh, from Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, so we're talking about that. Uh, 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 you know, coming back, you know, like you said, you know, you ankle cast still on and and still, you know, you know, beating her down and even standing up to people like Keith Lee. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, what what are some of your uh, uh, intentions going forward with uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling? Um, with my intentions with Inspire Pro Wrestling, obviously, I am not a, a contender for the FX Division title right now because of Delilah Doom. Um. So as of right now, my only intentions in Inspire Pro Wrestling are just to teach Doom a lesson. Like I don't, I don't think she belongs there. I don't think she belongs in the match for the title. I don't think that she belongs in pro wrestling. Like she is, she is everything that I was at the beginning of my career when I had no business being in the business. When I was, I, Delilah is, she's naive. She is dumb. She doesn't understand. And I feel like all of that is apparent in the ring when she gets a victory and acts like she just won the lottery. Like, I mean, it's, I don't know. I, I just, there's something about her that really gets under my skin. And I, I don't think she needs to be around. I don't think she needs to be on the Inspire Pro roster when you have so many other talented females on the roster. And then to have someone that's been in the business for five minutes getting a shot at a title that could go on to somebody else that deserves it more is just kind of, it's appalling to me. Um, 
So right now, my intentions with Aspire Pro Wrestling are obviously just to eliminate Delilah Doom. But in the process of that, I also feel like, uh, like you mentioned, I stood up to Keith Lee because um, in the grand scheme of things, who's Keith Lee to me? Like, sure, he's a big dude, and he does some crazy stuff. And I'm not going to lie, when he threw me across the ring, he only used one arm. But, I mean, what what's a big guy when he's going to throw a girl in a cast across the ring? Like, really? That's impressive, I guess. Um I just don't back down and I kind of have like a never say die attitude. And I feel like that's apparent by always coming back from injury. Like I am at this point, I feel indestructible because no matter what happens to me, I rebuild and I get pieced back together and I come back, uh, which is why I was so, uh, I guess I was branded with the nickname of professional wrestling bride of Frankenstein because of how many times I have been rebuilt and how many times I have been pieced back together. Um, so in between my, you know, the ideas that I have boiling for Delilah, uh, I do plan on challenging Keith Lee for his prestige championship because, let's be honest, we, you guys have a champion that can't even hold on to his physical title. So how is he supposed to represent the company? And, you know, if I win, great. If I just get to put a beating on Keith Lee, great. If I still get to manhandle Delilah Doom, even better. I just, at this point in time, I have my sights set on one goal, and that is just to eliminate and embarrass her to the point that, like I said in the promo you spoke of, that she puts her gear away, and she just never looks at it again and moves on with her life. Uh, definitely, definitely some, some, uh, harsh intentions and, and, and I know also a lot of fans are, are, are uh, gleefully demanding that, uh, you get in the ring, uh, one day with Keith Lee. Uh, so I, it, that seems to be a match a lot of people want to see. So, uh, uh, who knows? Maybe, uh, may, maybe, maybe we'll that chance. Smart and they like to make money. They will make that happen. Well, we'll definitely have to see about that, uh, uh, <laughs> going forward. Um, Sort of going into uh, a couple of the bigger questions that we ask here on the show. Uh, one of the more recent ones that we uh, started asking people is, uh, uh, what are you watching currently, uh, wrestling-wise? Uh, you know, anything studying purposes or, or just for recreation? Um, I'm always studying. I always find things to study. Um, I always just, I, I watch, uh, obviously, the mainstream WWE television. Um, I watch NXT because it's, you know, it's, televised indie wrestling basically it's amazing Mm -hmm. um i watch roh when i get the chance i watch i watch a lot of new japan um i actually am subscribed to like the new japan network (laughs) like like their (laughs) their version of the wwe network uh new japan world and i kind of just dabble in watching a little bit of everything i study tapes from you know shimmer and i'm obviously at the show so i watch when i'm there and just kind of take bits and pieces and learn things And it also comes a lot with not even just watching for studying lines, but picking people's brains. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to have Alison Danger as a mentor, and she's she's given me a lot of really great advice. Um, I just did a training seminar with Jay Lethal, who has always been willing to offer me advice. Um, He's always been someone that I can go to, even when it's not even in-ring stuff, but just as far as professional backstage locker room etiquette kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, and obviously I, uh, I, study the people that I idolize. So I, you know, I study Jay Lethal tapes and, um, I study, you know, Alice in Danger. And I, I even uh, go back and watch like, you know, nineties stuff or eighties stuff and take bits and pieces of that that I see and, and utilize it. So, um, I watch a little bit of everything, to be honest. I watch, um, Gosh, I don't, I don't even know. Like I watched Takara for the longest time. I haven't been up on a lot of their recent stuff. Um, I was involved in the Wrestling News Network, so obviously I kind of, you know, watched mm. the, the different things there and the different styles that were combined when that network was created. Um, yeah, just a little bit of everything. Awesome. Definitely, definitely a, a well-rounded uh, selection of stuff. Um, and, and to sort of round things off, uh, the question that we uh, ask uh, everyone here on the show, and, and, and feel free to... Uh, Take it any which way uh, you'd like, uh, but uh, the question we have is, uh, what is, in your opinion, the best and the worst thing about independent wrestling? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to start with the worst thing about independent wrestling. Um, there's a couple different standpoints I can go by uh, or go from, I guess, for this. 
Um, I think one of the absolute worst things in independent wrestling is going to a show that you've never been on before and dealing with the locker room because mm. it actually has happened to me recently. So that's why it's on my brain. Um, if there's only a one women's match on the show and they know one of the girls already, but they don't know you coming in, which was me, uh, they tend the, some of the guys that aren't as professional as other guys, or that, you know, treat the locker room like a bro hangout. Uh, they don't necessarily treat you as if you're an equal or as if you're another wrestler. They kind of treat you like, let's see how many pickup lines I can throw at her before she starts avoiding me or before I think I can take her home. Mm-hmm. And that's that always really gets under my skin. Uh, luckily, some of the guys that were on the show I knew and I was pretty good friends with, so I just kind of isolated myself to sit with them and talk to them. And then uh, for the first time in my life, um, I was walking through a locker room and one of the male wrestlers grabbed me by the arm and stopped me and hit, like used a pickup line on me. And I just looked at him like he was insane and like pulled my arm away. I was like, just don't talk to me and like walked off. And like, I, I am super respectful uh, you know, and humble in locker rooms. And I try to, you know, I don't try to be like loud or brass or, you know, over, over the top or, you know, somebody that people are going to be like, Oh my God, why is she here? Like I, I, I'm super respectful of everybody. And then for someone, I feel like to kind of disrespect me like that, I was just like, ugh, like, who are you? Like, I don't even like, you didn't even bother to shake my hand when I got here and introduce yourself, but you're mm-hmm. going to do that because I'm just up to you. I'm just some female. And that was like, that really rubbed me the wrong way. So kind of some of the chauvinistic attitudes in pro wrestling are really annoying. But at the same time, some of the girls in wrestling are really big bitches and will treat you as if you're dirt because they've done, not necessarily even done bigger things than you. They just think that they're hot shit. And it's like, okay, cool. Like, you can talk down to me. That's whatever. I'm still going to just act the way that I act and be me. And at the end of the day, like, I know that I'm going to go home satisfied because I didn't stoop to your level. So sometimes the locker room etiquette isn't always there and that can really get under your skin, but you just kind of have to shrug it off and move on with your life because Mm. nine times out of 10, you're never going to see that person again and they're not going to go places that necessarily you're going to go. Well, that's, it's whatever. Um, Also one of my biggest like uh, things that I feel is terrible about pro wrestling is that I can't take my dogs on the road with me. <laughs> so, like I know it sounds super silly, but like my dogs are like my everything. And when I have to leave for like five days, and I'm always like, uh, whoever's watching them, or like if my parents are watching them or whatever, I'm like, send me as many pictures as you can. And they're like, I'm gonna <laughs> come home though, and I'm like, I don't care. Uh, I know certain companies have always been like, I don't care if you bring a dog in the locker room, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty sure if I was to contact them and be like, I'm bringing three dogs to the locker room, they'd be like, no. <laughs> Just, just no. So, um, yeah, that's one of my other big complaints was just that I, I have to spend time away from my dog. <laughs> I've seen that once. I think Jesse Bell Smothers brought a dog one time to RWA, and I'm just like, what, there's a dog here? What is this? <laughs> uh, I know. I think it was Steve Carino used to bring his dog to uh, – a show every time he was on it and everyone in the locker room just loved him. And I also know that Tomasa Champa um, Mm -hmm. spoke to management at Dreamwave and asked if he could bring his dog with him. And I was like, Oh my gosh, he's, I'm just going to hang out with your dog the whole show and just probably (laughs) forget when I go on and just, I'm just going to sit here with Champa's dog instead. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I know that that's, been like an option for certain um certain people that i work for because you know some promoters are you know more easygoing than others like i feel like if i got a hold of this at inspire pro and was like hey i'm bringing a dog in the car he wouldn't tell me no mm-hmm. um oh no no business, like, business is sweetheart like <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm sure he would be like well i just hope wherever you're staying you're fine with it <laughs> so, um i definitely there's you know out of my three dogs there's one that i would probably take over the other two just because she's calmer um, I definitely wouldn't take my youngest because he would be a nightmare in a locker room. So, um, but yeah, I just came away from my dogs. I'm just like, oh, just go on the road with me. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I also have to think about them and their little family themselves. So one being away from them for, you know, from the other two for three days is also kind of 
you know, traumatic for them as well. Right. Uh, question from the chat, actually. Wheels, speaking of which, uh, he, he works with over at RWA as well. Uh, have you ever uh, faced off against Jesse, Smell, Jesse Bell Smothers? I have not. Um, actually, I don't think we've ever even been on a show together. Oh, wow. I know. That's crazy, especially both being in the Midwest. And, and uh, I traveled with Mickey Knuckles for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, they, you know, her and Nikki always do shows together. Well, we used to until yeah. Nikki um, quit wrestling. They were, uh, in, recently. They, were, they were in the middle of a feud when, when uh, the news broke. I think we had her, uh, Mickey's last match with RWA uh, before, yeah. you know, before she retired. Unexpected. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, can't really wrestle pregnant. <laughs> so. No, 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 definitely not. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I know Mickey is like thrilled and she, she's getting married next month. And, nice. you know, she already has her daughter cool. and a stepson and I know she's excited for the new baby. So, uh, she's really happy. She's very much a family person. So I think it's good for her. Um, mm. but yeah, I've never, I've never been on a show with Jesse Bell. Awesome. And, and did you have a have a uh, a best thing about independent wrestling as well? Yes, uh, the best part about independent wrestling, I feel like, um, there's two things for me that stand out. Um, one is the fans. Uh, some of the fans, <laughs> some of them can be awful, but <laughs> the good fans that uh, just get behind you and support you. And you know, um, if you're having a bad day and you put it out on social media, like I tend to sometimes, you know, just the comments that they'll make to you and the motivating things they'll say and, you know, stuff like that. Or like the little kids that'll come up to you after a show and be like, Oh my God, you were amazing. Like, I love you so much. Like, that's pretty cool. Um, and even like adults that say that, like people, you know, that just walk by when you're at your merchandise table, there's like, that was a really good match, you know, good for you. That kind of thing. Like, that's pretty cool. And it's also always nice too, when like, not even for like the money aspect of it, but for you to be like, Hey, I got this sweet new shirt designed. Like, would you be interested in it? And people are like, hell yeah, like I want that. I would spend my hard-earned money on that. When they don't have to do that because they're already paying, you know, for a ticket to come watch you wrestle, then to further support you by buying your merchandise because it's something they want to own, I think that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, so the fans that, you know, are respectful and don't creep or do anything like that, like I, I love that. I love like the, the little kid fans. I, I love... Pretty much, I've never really had a super terrible fan interaction, um, but, you know, some people have their moments. Uh, I think the second thing is the friendships that you make, um, because, you know, you'll you'll make some not honest friendships, people that are just going to try and piggyback and, like, use you for your connection, or that just decide one day they don't want to be your friend anymore because maybe you got more successful than them or, uh, you know, whatever, any dumb reason that they can come up with. Cause I've experienced that a lot actually, but you can like just bond with someone at one show and then suddenly like you're on the road with them all the time. And, you know, you're texting each other uh, about real life stuff. And suddenly they go from being like, you know, just a friend in wrestling to being like your best friend in real life. Um, and even like I've had the opportunity to even, you know, make friends with, um, like guy, you know, people that just do podcasts or people that just write for websites about wrestling or, you know, uh, people that work for like PWI, just stuff like that. just because you're around them and in the environment and, uh, it's not even other wrestlers, you know, you make friends with referees, you make friends with wrestlers, girlfriends, you make friends with, you know, wrestlers, boyfriends, like it's just that kind of thing. Um, just some of the bonds that you can form, especially just going on the road with other people. You know, when you spend 16 hours in the car with somebody, you're bound to either want to kill them or, you know, want to put them over to the moon and tell everyone how amazing they are. Um, so I, that's something that I've always cherished is the friendships of, of the people that I've, I can go to and be like, hey, this is not related to wrestling at all, but I need to talk to someone and, you know, they'll pick up their phone or they'll be there. And I, I think that is one of the best parts of pro wrestling. Awesome. Definitely, definitely. Um, well, thank you so much, Angela, for coming on and, and, and talking uh, about your career and, and, and everything in, in, in wrestling with us. Um, if, if people want to follow you on, on social media or if you have any uh, upcoming events uh, that you're going to be uh, appearing at, uh, feel free to uh, plug away. Okay, awesome. Uh, as far as upcoming events go, I will be at 
Funky Monkey Wrestling in Sterling, Illinois, uh, this upcoming Saturday, May 23rd. Um, the last weekend of May, the 30th and the 31st, I'll be in Texas. On the 30th, I'll be wrestling for Lone Star Championship Wrestling out of Houston, I believe. And then yeah. on the 31st, I come back to Inspire Pro, nice and healthy, to uh, team with Tim Storm to wrestle the World's Cutest Tag Team. The first weekend of June, on June 6th, I'll be at Dreamway Wrestling. Uh, June 13th, I will be at After Dark Wrestling, which is a new experimental company coming out of LaSalle, Illinois. And then uh, June 14th, I will be at Dreamwave Wrestling again. So um, that's my first in the next couple weeks going on. Um, as far as social media goes, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. It's just at Angelus Lane, A-N-G-E-L-U-S-L-A-Y-N-E. A lot of people misspell it, so I always do that. Uh, it's the same on Instagram. It is the same on Facebook. It's all just at Angelus Lane. Um Pretty much all the social media I really use a lot as far as, like, fans go. Like, I have Snapchat, but I'm not very about to put it out there because it's pretty wrestling fans. So, no, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to, you know, talk to me, you can send me a message on Facebook. You can tweet at me. Uh, like pictures on my Instagram. It's mostly dogs. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's. That's most of the social media I use, and those are my upcoming dates. Um, I also have a pro wrestling tea store. It's prowrestlingtees.com slash Angela Slane. My newest design is going up this week, so that's super exciting. And if you want to find out any more information about me, just follow me on Twitter because that's what I use the most. Um, and, yeah, uh, also follow at Grappler Brand Athletes. I believe, maybe. Maybe it's just at Grappler Brand. They're one of my sponsors, and they're dope, and they do so much for me, and I'm so grateful for them. So check them out, and you can find a bunch of other sponsored athletes like Athena. So that's pretty cool. Um, awesome. So there we go. I think that's my uh, follow me spiel right now. <laughs> I'm just awesome. surprised so I remembered my date. <laughs> No problem. No problem. Uh, and and uh, if you uh, see Angela Slane on an upcoming card, uh, definitely go check her out because you will surely not be disappointed. Uh, you may see, see okay. some people get beat up. Um, yeah, you'll definitely see people get beat up. <laughs> absolutely. So uh, uh, thank you again, Angela. And, and me and Sorg now are going to dive into the stuff happening uh, this week in the world of independent wrestling. That's right, Eamon. A tremendous interview with uh, with, uh, with our guest there. Uh, please check her out on the uh, uh, Pro Wrestling Tees and everything. Of course, we're up there as well, uh, uh, prowrestlingtees.com slash WS. So pick up one of her shirts. She's got some cool designs I was checking out during during the interview. And, uh, and we got some cool designs too. And, and support indie wrestling, indie podcasting, all kinds of stuff over at prowrestlingtees.com. So I understand there's a Rolling Stones article that's been making some waves. Uh, I know it popped up. I didn't get a chance to read this yet. Uh, but you said it's pretty significant. Uh, I do. It's actually with uh, uh, Matt and Nick Jackson of the Young Bucks. Okay. Uh, uh, one of the most prominent uh, uh, teams right now. They talk about a lot of stuff with like uh, Kevin Owens, obviously, who you know was a, a big part of their career as well. Uh, his recent stuff and and just talking about in general the stuff they're doing uh, uh, in in America, but also in New Japan and, and all that stuff. Uh, and and they they brought up a really good point that I, I kind of wanted to discuss. That um, they talk about sort of you know the the Reports are out there, and, and they confirm those reports that uh, there are a lot of companies that are seeking them out uh, for you know for long term stuff, uh, uh, including WWE. Um, and uh, they mentioned that uh, you know they've gotten offers from WWE before, but one of the big things is that you know they you know the Young Bucks I think have become really synonymous with independent wrestling, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and their ability to market themselves and and their ability to you know wrestle everywhere in the world. Um, and they mentioned that, you know, you know, the, the amount of money they're making in, you know, the amount of money they're, you know, both Matt and Nick Jackson have, uh, you know, uh, family, uh, wives and kids, and, and they're able to, you know, live off of professional wrestling. And then they even mentioned that, you know, some of the offers that they get for WWE are, um, you know, they are bigger than, or, or I should say the, the stuff they get on the indies is much bigger than what they get in, uh, would be offered in WWE. Uh, and I just found that to be a very interesting uh, uh, point. Um, so what, what are your uh, thoughts of, you know, is WWE, obviously we have uh, influx of independent talents like Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Adrian Neville that, are frozen, that have risen to become top stars. Uh, what do you think, do you think that would happen this, you know, do you think it's necessary, I guess? Because 
you know, obviously there's, according to the young bucks, at least there's opportunities to make a lot of money uh, in on the independents. I think with any business, um, I think there's the opportunity, there's being smart about business, and there is living the dream. For some people, I think, when you get in this business, everybody wants WrestleMania, right? I, I can't think of anybody honestly can say, you know, they, they they didn't grow up with Hulk Hogan or whatever. Maybe they're soured on it because of maybe the experiences they've had with WWE or friends in WWE or by a talent agent in WWE. But that's the way you want to go. And a guy like Kevin Owens, a guy's like Young Bucks, yeah, they can probably make a lot of money. But uh, they also kind of have to be their own business manager. And then this yeah. is this is a conversation that happens a lot with just freelancing in general. Uh, I'm a freelancer. I'm an independent worker, right? Uh, and, and I have to chase the money. I have to find the people that will pay me to do this thing, right? Or or hopefully get myself in a fortunate position like the Young Bucks where people are seeking me out. And I do have that on some aspects. But at a certain point, and this is a thought, at what point do you say, oh, I don't want to have to worry about this and taxes and this and that, and I want to go somewhere and and have somebody else do my booking and everything and etc for me and i just go work for them and i and 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 there's a i think you know you know guys like Cole Cabana, they made it work they're like i'm going to make this work in wrestling the dream didn't happen mm -hmm. with wwe i'm going to make it happen and they're he's the example you go towards aj styles and, and, and they actually they actually cite cabana in the uh in the uh, interview of course that sort of, you know was really good at marketing himself and he's not somebody like uh aj styles who's been on top on television for years and years and years and now he's cashing in on that independently so i mean that i think is easier for him but for young bucks they haven't been on anything big Ring of Honor yeah. a few times, you know. Well, TNA, uh, but uh, How, yeah, yeah, I guess they have. Yeah, they did for a little bit, but still, I think their brand is still self-made for the most part, yeah. and 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 that they're they've been smart about it. They've created this thing. They have they have a, a certain kind of match. Their fun stuff with a super kick, you know. I mean, I think, I think the, again. You're you have to be better than just a pro wrestler. You know, you much you know, how many times have we talk about how how pro wrestling is not just what you do in the ring, it's what you do on the mic, it's being an actor, it's this other stuff. But it's also if you're an independent wrestler that wants to make it, you have to have a business sense. Have a really good manager, maybe. You know, maybe your wife's good at that stuff and they're helping you with that kind of thing. You know, as some of us independent people try to do, you know, please do write up the thingies for me and send a cease and desist, you know, or whatever the case may be. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, it's definitely there's definitely a lot of especially Japan. You basically go into the WWE of, of Japan. How, how yeah. often? Uh, yeah, there's opportunity, but there's a lot of effort to get to that opportunity. I, I think the key is like you know if you ask like well can independent wrestling make you as much money uh, and, and it comes down to it can if you market yourself right uh, you know the young bucks mentioned also like you know there was a point in time where they you know weren't you know on the level that they were you know they were barely selling a lot of merchandise at shows and they would look at people like Kevin Owens or people like El Generico and see the way they interacted with fans and see the way that they marketed themselves and modeled themselves after that mm -hmm. and and. Now they, they, you know, they, they mention like, you know, shirts, especially like Bullet Club and, and the stuff they're doing there, like the, the, their merchandise is just selling through the roof. You know, I would contend it's on, you know, Bullet Club merchandise is probably on the levels of any major WWE merchandise that's being sold. Mm -hmm. I, I really feel that way because, you know, there's not an indie show you can go to without spotting at least three Bullet Club t-shirts. Like it is become a thing that they, they were really smart with. And, and and they like you said marketed themselves well and and created a brand of themselves to like you like we mentioned like feed their families and and, and you know that that's really cool to see but it, and it's cool that they, they did it on their own they did it without you know Vince McMahon's money or anything like that certainly certainly yeah and, and here it goes to show WWE is not the only game in town we talk about we talked about so much on the wrestling Mayhem show tonight about how we have these other options with Ring of Honor and, and Lucha Underground and, and yeah, okay, Impact. Uh, but you still have these other op other other options with uh, your indies and these guys doing great, great, great things. So, um, but, you know, hey, there could be a point where they do get an offer. Maybe they're cool now, but maybe there is a time where they're like, eh, I don't want to get, I I'm done with the rat race of doing it this way. Let's try the NXT way. You know, yeah. and, and, and the nice thing is the, the greatest thing, if you are an independent worker like that and you do have that brand equity building up, 
um, I've, I've, I've experienced this. I was offered a job uh, a couple years ago doing some teaching and I'm like, well, I don't need to do that, but that sounds like fun, you know, and yeah. it, it, it paid decent. And I'm like, yeah, let's try this for a little bit. You know, you know, you get the right offer to NXT says, yeah, let's try this for a little bit. And, uh, if it doesn't work, you know, you already have the fan base and you can go right back to what you were doing before. So I, I think it's a really cool, uh, uh, enviable si- situation for them to be in. Good for them. Seriously, good for them. And they're not the only ones that can do this. And, and if you're an indie wrestler, uh, I think you need to consider this as a possibility. If you're a new trainee or whatever, uh, be like, okay, am I going to aim whatever I can do to get the WWE, TNA, whatever? Or am I going to look at Cole Cabana's model and figure out how I can do that? At what point mm-hmm. in wrestling school do they say, don't start a podcast yet, please? Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, don't do X, Y, and Z. Don't work for these people yet because we don't think you're trained enough. Don't do this character because we don't think you're ready to do it. You know, maybe, or, you know, these are, these are things I've heard. I don't know if this is how every, or every group or even the current one I'm thinking of, you know, does it. But, uh, you know, versions of that is what I've heard over the years. And, and you know, uh, maybe a, a question in that is like, don't start a podcast until you're really sure about your character, right? Um, hey, you know, that's a good place to workshop your character, to be honest, I think. I think it works for comedians. Why not for wrestling characters? So, anyways, Definitely. that's my thoughts. But, I, no, really cool. And Rolling Stone, again, somebody loves wrestling at the Rolling yeah. Stone. That's that's awesome, that's tremendous. It's really cool to see. So awesome, great, great. Uh, so what else is happening in the indies? Uh, I don't I don't know. I don't think I have anything on the books really popping up around here. I'll double check. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know of any uh, huge events that are happening this weekend. Obviously, Ring of Honor and and coming off of their uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling shows. Uh, I encourage anybody who. Uh, listen to this show to also listen to this week's wrestling mayhem show uh as we talked with uh vaughn johnson uh, uh our guest this week about his time at the ring of honor new japan show uh, one of the ring of honor new japan shows as well as um his time at the uh, nxt house shows in philadelphia um so yeah uh th- there's gonna be a uh, you know, it, it was a cool time from what I saw. There's a lot of great stuff coming from that. You know, four four shows featuring New Japan talent in Ring of Honor uh, all looked amazing. Uh, uh, and I believe they're all available on VOD uh, or will be eventually. Uh, so uh, definitely go check those out because I hear nothing but great things from uh, live reports. From our list uh, that we get in a press release over here uh, from Nate Stein, uh, I, I want to point out just uh, I have not looked into these, just names just jumping out at me. Uh, Lucha Extreme, if you're in Fresno, California, uh, mm. they're doing a show on Sunday, the twenty fourth. Lucha Extreme, that's X with the, uh, with a letter X Stream, no E. Uh, dot com. Lucha Extreme. Because that's how the cool kids do so it. That's how the cool kids do it. Uh, Wrestling Society X, for instance. Uh, High Risk Wrestling is going to be in uh, East St. Louis, Illinois, on the same day. Uh, Facebook.com. Just look for uh, High Risk Wrestling, and they'll probably pop up there. Their uh, their 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 site is kind of ridiculous looking. Uh, let's see, what a, Kamikaze Pro on the what, these are interesting names category. I'm just seriously just kind of pointing these out here. Also, uh, fat, oh, it's UK. Facebook.com slash Kamikaze Pro UK. If you want to check them out, uh, yeah, I, I love some of these names. I love different names for wrestling. Uh, I, you know, I, 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 you know, everybody around here is a three-letter thing. Right, PWS, yes. IWC, RWA. You guys are Inspire Pro. You don't go by letters. Yes. We are not IPW. You're not. I've heard people call us that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's a tendency because that's what you see a lot. Brew City Wrestling. I bet that is in. No, it is. Okay, it is in Wisconsin. Okay, River City. We talked about. Uh, wait, that's no River City Championship Wrestling. That's different than the one we were that were. Uh, Wait, what was a uh, RCW or something down your way? Yeah, that was a, that's a, yeah, no, the, yeah, no championship in the one uh, down no, here. Just but, River City uh, yeah. Wrestling RCW. That's right. Uh, Adrenaline Rush Wrestling. Oh, wonder when they made that one in McDonald, Tennessee. <laughs> uh, arwrestling.com. I'll spell it out. Dot com. And no, that's Facebook.com slash arwrestling.com. You spell oh, out wow. D O T com. It went in that one. So have fun with that. Marvel, <laughs> Marvel Elite Wrestling. I this is I'm I, I'm just going through this. Hood Slam. We've talked about Hood Slam before. Love me some Hood Also Slam. a great name. All Star Wrestling. Uh, great talk. It, you, we uh, you, again, you guys. 
uh, talk about, uh, I don't know, are you one of them that listens to We Are uh, We Watch Wrestling? Uh, I don't, but you Bobby should. keeps telling me to. You <laughs> should, yes. There's uh, one guy ended up on a Sunday show that ended up featuring Matt Stryker and Gangrel in the main event, and the rest of it was a TV taping for local TV. And he had some, like somebody from PW, uh, I'm sorry, PWG was there, Pro Wrestling Gorilla. And this was like in Portland, I think. And mm. it, it was it was pretty good to hear him explain the experience and how there wasn't a lot of people there. So I went to the concession stand many times and only spent eight bucks. And, and it was it's it's really cool because they're very much like this are guys. They're comedians and stuff. But they just like, yeah, I dig wrestling. And to hear them kind of talk cool. about it. It's such a it's also such casual. Uh, I, I don't know if it's really relatable to what we do here. We try to kind of stay casual, but we've added a little more structure as we go uh, with Wrestling <laughs> Mayhem Show. But it is like just a casual conversation about wrestling between guys who are genuinely funny uh, because they're comedians, of course. But uh, uh, listen to that today, the, their last episode. I'm going to try to keep up with them. I'm going to try to get them more into rotation because it is a really good conversation. And now I'll get half of the jokes and be able to call out the guys that are quoting them on our shows because I think that's been happening a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways uh, that's what i got anything else indy uh the only thing i do want to mention uh, uh that i just remember was that beyond wrestling's were all turn was this past oh, weekend. oh yeah how was that we you guys it were involved was, in it again it was fun uh inspired pro wrestling was once again a part of this and 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 uh, it was fun once again it's cool to get exposure from people um you know you know, and, and read some new markets. I, I was moderating the, uh, I, I was the Inspire Pro Wrestling moderator for uh, the chat room. And I, and someone actually said that the match that we presented, which was Athena versus Barbie Hayden, uh, convinced them to come to our May 31st show. So that's nice. Exciting. Take that elimination chamber. Ha! Yeah. See, we got one of them. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, one it was really time. fun. Um, seemed like a really great success, uh, mm-hmm. uh, as the last one was, uh, it's, I, I tweeted this. It's really, it, it like sunk in like maybe like halfway through that I got to commentate a match on Raw Alternative and my match that I called uh, followed a match called by Matt Stryker and a match called by Tommy Dreamer. Ah. And that's kind of crazy. <laughs> this is um, my life right now. You say to yeah, yourself, that, you ever have those moments where oh. it's just like, this is what I'm doing. Like that is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, Dude, no, it was super fun. Uh, there's uh, a well, on Friday. Welcome, welcome to the world of pro wrestling. Yes, welcome, pro, welcome to Pro Wrestling. On Friday, um, the uh, stream is going to be up for anyone to watch for, I believe, uh, it's either 48 or 72 hours, uh, uh, one of the two. Uh, that's for people that couldn't watch the show because they were, you know, maybe you're in the UK or maybe, you know, time zone issues or whatever. You get the chance to watch the whole stream again. Maybe you'll uh, watch for a Raw. <laughs> yeah, or, or watch Raw and saw Kevin Owens and being awesome. Um, but, uh, it's, uh, that'll be on Friday. So, uh, uh, from Friday to like, I believe Monday, uh, you can watch the, uh, you can watch the stream. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Completely awesome. Go check that out. Really cool thing. I, and again, I felt like they kind of went up against a rough raw to, I'm telling you, WWE watches the Indies. People don't believe they you have when, they, to. when they say it, but WWE's always got an eye on, on things. But, uh, uh, the, the conspiracy theories aside, uh, you know, you know, Hey, you know, Good, there's people watching good wrestling. You know, some people were watching at the same time. So, hey, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you and, know and, more and wrestling is good wrestling. Even if, like, the up top, you know, Vince, Triple H, whatever, not, no, they're not paying attention. But there's enough people, I think, at WWE that are just wrestling fans that do pay attention to this other stuff. And they're saying, hey, guys, I'm not Kevin Owens. You know, you know, maybe one of the writers or something like that. And they're getting a bug in, in the right ears and, and yeah. responding. You know, it's a big company. You never know. So awesome. So uh, guys, check us out. If there's any indies you want us to talk about or anything you think we're missing out on, please hit us up at good times at wrestling There There's so much out there. We have our fish bowls that we're in and that's why we're trying to expand that and, and introduce you to ours uh, next week's uh, going to be a really interesting, interesting interview uh, with the fellow from uh, strong style. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to butcher this strong style. Uh, 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 brands. I, I just closed the document. I'm sorry. Uh, but it will, have it advertised appropriately over the social media this next week uh but it's something a little different it's not it's not a wrestler it's not something else and it's something outside of our comfort zone it's not somebody that we run into at the shows all the time which is basically how we usually book this thing right right (laughs) (laughs) and uh we're gonna see how that goes and but we've had we've had great stuff going on oh uh side note vow the crazy sick bastards that they are they're doing a deathmatch tournament in fairmont washington fairmont west virginia 
keep an eye out for that. Friends of the show have already been announced for that, including G Raver and Matrimon. Yes. Sounds fun. Yes. So if you, if you love you some deathmatch. So if you love you some deathmatch, that's a thing that happens. Uh VOW, you are crazy, crazy, sick bastards, and I love you for it. Uh, keeping it really interesting and I think uh, taking chances that nobody else of course that's not a Pittsburgh area show but still taking chances that nobody around here is you know I don't think they're allowed to by state law to actually some of those chances but anyways uh, check us out wrestlingmamshow.com Andy Mayhem Show is the show to subscribe to on your iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio YouTube is a Wrestling Mayhem Show or a Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook a great Facebook group a lot of conversation on there there has been ads going up for the Lucha Libre uh, 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 the trios tournament that I can't understand the words to for instance <laughs> That's how widespread we are here at this point. So please go check out everything wrestling. And let us know what you think. Give me some feedback. Give us some feedback um, that I won't delete because they're naughty words. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> But no, a lot of responses on YouTube. A lot of videos as well. Really, really, really cool to see. So thanks a lot to everything. Amen at Amen 2, please. Inspire Pro Wrestling. Go there instead of uh, Elimination Chamber, will you? Please. Please, please do. <laughs> please do. Please do. There will be another week of this. I apologize. Uh, then we'll see how it went. And everything will be right went anyways. And and then Eamon will be happy. Eamon will be happy that he got to speak. Not in front of, but around so many people. <sighs> anyways. Uh, <laughs> in the meantime, uh, we'll do the thing. Support the stuff. And definitely support Indie Rest. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. for the taste of the Sick, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down Act wow Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred Check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com For all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle <laughs>